What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to a new segment, another segment. Uh, today, I'm going to rank my top 30 favorite 80s sitcoms. Why? No reason. Was there a demand for it? Nope. Did anybody ask? Nope. Why am I doing it? I have no clue. It's Sunday. I'm bored. So, no, I, I don't know. I just, I had seen something, maybe one of those, you know, oh, do you want to see the where are they now or something, something, but. I started th thinking of all the 80s TV shows, and then I had a, like a list of about 60, 70. So then I just thought, okay, let me just narrow it down to the sitcoms and comedies in general, and then we'll go from there. So I have no particular order here, but um, let's see if we uh, share some of the same shows. I'm pretty sure we will. So if you're around 50, chances are we'll have a, have a bunch that are the same, so. I will start in no particular order here. So my first item, my first show is one of my favorites. I, I think I I do remember seeing this like the last couple seasons uh, of the of the when they would air on. I'm pretty sure it was ABC. It's Three's Company with John Ritter, Suzanne Somers, Joyce DeWitt, Richard Klein, Don Knotts, or Norman Fell. Uh, such a great show. Uh, John Ritter was just comedic genius. He was so good. Uh, it's such a loss. Um, and Richard Klein, uh, Larry upstairs. He was he was great. He was uh, this is a very very well written show. It was based on a, a British series apparently. But uh, as a kid, you know, you're watching it. Like obviously, Jack is just smashing chicks left and right and pretending to be gay <laughs> just so he could pay less rent. Like where did he come up with that? That, that storyline so so amazing. So. That's, their, that's Three's Company. Next, Saturday Nights wouldn't, wouldn't be the same without Different Strokes. It's kind of a uh, sad sort of a show with, you know, Dana Plato and Gary Coleman and then Todd Bridges having a bit of drug issues. Who knows what was going on in these film sets in like the 70s, 80s, but uh, this show was good. And then they had, uh, what's her name? Charlotte Ray went to Facts of Life and they got Belle and then... Oh, who's the that was uh, oh who's the next one they had I can't remember but Danny Cooksey showed up the little redheaded kid he became a, an awesome singer he was in Terminator Two and then he was in a band called Bad for Good he was actually quite a good singer so that's Different Strokes following Different Strokes on Saturdays I'm pretty sure I remember Facts of Life being on there um, Kim Fields Lisa Welchel Joe and Natalie what the hell Mindy Cohen and then uh, Joe, oh, it's her Nancy, Nancy McKeon, and then her, she had her brother, Todd McKeon. He's in another show I'm going to mention. So that's Facts of Life. One that started off in the 70s, but I remember seeing the final few seasons as well in the 80s. This is Happy Days. Ron Howard, Henry Winkler, Hanson Williams, Donnie Most, Aaron, Aaron, uh, Joni, Scott Bale. This is a big show. This is a very big show back in the day. And then following Happy Days, we would have Laverne and Shirley. Again, a lot of these shows started in the 70s and then petered out in the 80s. Laverne and Shirley was, uh, both of those shows were based in Milwaukee. That's kind of crazy. Not a very uh, common city setting. Next, we have probably one of my favorites, like through the 80s as a kid. Like, like I had a couple different sort of sections of like, when these shows aired, first aired for the first few seasons, and then, you know, get a little bit older, and then there's some other shows that came on. But uh, The Cosby Show, for me and my sister, this came on, I think, 83, 84, and we loved it. We loved it like my neighbors. Everybody would love The Cosby Show, which is kind of strange for me. I'm just going to say this. Like, being Canadian, I'm from Vancouver Island, we didn't have many black people. Um, I did go to school with one girl and then a boy, her younger brother, the Tates. They were Jamaican. And then there was uh, Mr. Joseph, and he had a family there. He was my English teacher in grade 12. There wasn't a lot of black kids at all in my town. And so, like, I don't remember any racism towards blacks. I do remember racism towards the natives, the aboriginals. And I do remember racism towards the Indians, like the, the from India Indians. We're the only place that calls them Indians. Like Indians, which would be native Aboriginal First Nations. We call them Indians in North America. It's so stupid. 
I don't remember racism towards blacks. So we have these TV shows like Cosby, and then the next one I'm going to choose is a different world, and it's like all black people. And then like I remember as a kid, we all loved that show, and we didn't. I didn't. Nobody cared that they were black. It just was. It was what it was. It was a great show. It was funny, entertaining. Cliff Hugstable, the gynecologist, looking at women's badges in the basement all day long, and then his wife. Ah. Uh, uh, she was married to that uh, sports broadcaster guy. Uh, she was a great actress as well. Is a great actress. Um, but the show is amazing. Uh, very groundbreaking. And yeah, can't say enough good things. Different World with Lisa Bonet. We all had a crush on Lisa Bonet. <laughs> That's junior high. She was so hot, man. I almost had a chance to uh, uh, to see her. I was, I was doing a photo. We were doing a photo shoot for PBC Boxing. And then we got asked to come to the Troubadour to see this band called Twin Shadow. And the I had to go park. So we went straight from the photo shoot to this venue, and I had to park. Susie had a, a nice vehicle, and we had a bunch of gear in the car, so I had to make sure it was not in a bad location. She was there to take some promo shots for this band, Twin Shadow. When she got there, the opening act was on. It was Zoe Kravitz, and her mom was there watching. And uh, When I got there, they were finished, and then this Twin Shadow guy was on there. Had a couple cool songs, this Twin Shadow, but uh, oh, I would have loved to have seen Lisa Bonet, man. Yeah, childhood crush. So, different world. The whole Thursday night on NBC was phenomenal. So, Cosby, different world. Next is Cheers, which was uh, a great, actually, I, re- I liked it even better. Of Coach was on there, and then Woody Harrelson take his place. Uh, Shelley Long left, and Kirstie Alley took her place. Rhea Perlman, Ratzenberger. Uh, I had a uh, Kelsey Grammer as uh, what's her name? That, that stuck out woman. She was always so stuffy. Looked like she needed to get laid really bad. I forget her name, uh, but it was a very very good show. And then my I probably my favorite of those four as far as comedy goes, which w- would be Night Court with Harry Anderson, Harry Anderson, Harry Anderson, Marky Post, uh, John Larroquette, and then Richard Mole as Bull. Thursday nights were awesome on NBC back in the day. Next, we have the one that I used to watch with my grandparents all the time, The Golden Girls. Um, yeah, uh, B. Arthur, she was in some good shows. She had Maud there, and then I think she was on, was she on All in the Family back in the 70s? So she had a, a pretty good pretty good run there, some good shows. She was very, you're a very funny lady. That was a good show. Next, I'm pretty sure this is Tuesday nights on ABC. We have The Wonder Years with Fred Savage and... Winnie Cooper and Paul was his his friend. That was a good show. I enjoyed that one. Um, my first crush for this next show was Alyssa Milano on Who's the Boss? Tony Danza, Judith Light, Jenny Pin- Danny Pintaro, and Kathleen Helmond as Mona. She was always so horny. <laughs> as a kid, I'm just like, ah, I just, just give that give give it to Mona. 12, 13, 14 years old, wanted to give it to some 50-year-old lady. Next, probably my like favorite show as I was a little bit older, which is Growing Pains with Kirk Cameron and Alan Thicke and Joanna Judith Joanna Kearns. Judith Light was on was on uh was on uh Who's the Boss? And then also too Leonardo DiCaprio with this debut here on Growing Pains. It was a very good show for a few years there, and then it got kind of they kind of had a falling out. Kirk Cameron, I guess he became like more Christian in the sense where he's like, can we do some shows that are kind of positive and Mike not always being sort of a scammer and a, a grease ball. Um, next, here's one that came on a little bit later in the decade. This is uh, Roseanne. This is one of the best white trash TV shows you're ever going to find. Um, very groundbreaking, that show. Very well written. That, was, that show was funny. Another one that I liked with my grandfather when I'd go summer up in the Okanagan in British Columbia, Penticton, on the West Bench, we would always watch New Heart. Uh, this is my brother, this is my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl. Very good show. One that it was a uh, one that I watched a little bit more uh as a mid teen, which is Charles in Charge. Scott Bayo and my other big crush was Nicole Eggert. She was a little haughty. Next, we have Head of the Class. I think it's Howard Hessman. Robin Givens, Mrs. Uh, the former Mrs. Mike Tyson's 
Mrs. Mike Tyson. And, oh, Dan Snyder, the uh, alleged Nickelodeon perv who loves feet. Just have a look at that guy and let me know if you would get the creeps from him or not. Uh, next, uh, a show that was uh, a bit over my head as a kid, but it was still very funny. It's uh, Too Close for Comfort. This is Ted Knight and uh, Jim J. Bullock, and then the redheaded wife, and she had a baby, Cosmic Cow. He was the at, he did a cartoon comic strip. And the one dark-haired daughter, I forget her name, but I remember she was in the Warriors, stole them from the, the orphans or something like that. Great film. Next, another lady show. Uh, this is Kate and Allie. This is Jane Curtin, Susan St. James. Jane is uh, SNL, one of the original SNL. I remember watching the show. My friend Alex across the street, his mom was divorced and then she's living alone. So you're seeing two women living together, living alone. It was kind of a, I, I seem to have been over there watching sitcoms on, you know, Tuesday, Wednesdays, whenever the show came on. If it was Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I forget. Uh, Kate and Allie. Next, another. Saturday night. I'm pretty sure this is Saturday night. Pretty sure it's NBC. It's Silver Spoons. I'm going on memory here. So this has got to be around 83, 84. Ricky Schroeder, Aaron Gray, and then Derek, Jason Bateman. He was so good on this show at, at a young age. Ricky Schroeder was as good as well, or as the, he wants to be called now as Rick Schroeder. Um, I just remember watching that show and seeing all the video, like the full size arcade things, and then driving the train through the through the living room and Oh, that show was good. That show was good. I dreamed to have a friend like Ricky Schroeder. Okay, next. Uh, this one's a little bit different, uh, but it was one of the best. Sledgehammer. This guy's name is... I forget the guy's name, but he was very non-PC. Always doing crazy shit. Even just thinking about it, that show is funny. Next, uh, I think this show is underrated. I thought this show was very well written. The great cast. It's, it's Mr. Belvedere with Bob Euchre. Uh, Wesley, the little kid, he was very much like a Bart Simpson in the making there. Very, very, very well written show. I really liked that one. I thought it was very funny. Next, a uh, great show that was, uh, I think it was a knockoff from a, a variety show. It's Mama's House or Mama's Family? Mama's Family. Mama's Family. I'm thinking Grandma's House. Uh, this is Vicki Lawrence and Carol Burnett. I think she was playing Eunice, the old lady that walked very slow. Uh, I think Tim Conway was on here. And actually, Rue McClanahan and uh, Betty White were on this as well. In the first, I'm talking like the initial first two seasons, 83, 84, because they canceled it and they rebooted it. And it just looked, it was not the same. So I'm talking the original Mama's Family. Next is another one I swear is from uh, Saturday Nights. This is Give Me a Break with Nell Carter. Uh, Joey Lawrence actually <laughs> ended up being on this show. That show was not bad. Uh, another one, uh, 227 with Marla Gibbs and Jack A. Now, Marla was the, the, the sassy maid on the Jeffersons. She was she was great. She had some great lines, good, great comedic timing. She was, she was very good on that show. That's 227. Next, another one with Jason Bateman. It's Valerie's family and the Hogan family. Now they had, I'm pretty sure, it's Valerie. Pretty sure it's Valerie Harper, the one from uh, Alice. She, uh, she was on. Was it her? And then it was Sandy Duncan that got on there. Yeah, it was Valerie's. Yeah, so they. <laughs> she wanted too much money, so they they just wrote her off the show. Oh, she died in a car accident or something. I forget what happened, but that was one of the shows. Like, Where's the lady? It's the Hogan family now. What happened? You know, I wasn't subscribed to enter Entertainment Weekly or anything like that, so I didn't know what actually went on, but I just remember as a kid watching what happened. Just so long as Jason Bateman was on that show, he was awesome. Through the 80s, he was so good on TV. He's a, I really liked his really witty, smart ass. He was very good. Last few, we've got uh, one called Punky Brewster with Soleil Moonfry. This actually went for a few seasons. Um, I remember there was an episode where George, the guy that I guess took her in and they were trying to win tickets to the Cubs game. And he's like, what's the windiest city in, in America? And she's like, I know, I know. And he's like, Oh, I know it's Chicago. And she's like, I think she said great falls, Montana. I always remembered that because he got it wrong. Um, next, this one was a little bit more of like a, a, a 
not in front of a live studio audience. It was a bit different. It's uh, Doogie Hauser. As a kid, you know, you're 12, 13 years old, and you got some kid that's 16, and, and it's like the doctor. For the first for the first few seasons, it was pretty good actually, especially the theme song with that cheesy keyboard patch. And last but not least, we've got Perk. Uh, Perfect Strangers with Bronson Payne showed as Balky. I forget what the name of that town, the, the country he was from. But that was uh, pretty good. So, yeah, I got them all. I got, yeah, I got them all in here. Um, yeah, I didn't, this is, I also want to say this is a, a list for American things. I have like four or five ones that are from the UK, but I thought, okay, maybe we'll just do one of those lists. I didn't see as many. And I caught on to them a bit later, so I was watching reruns when they were airing in Canada. Um, but there was some, there was some, <laughs> there's some great British ones. I'll do a separate list for that one. So this is my top 30 U.S. sitcoms from the 80s. So let me know what you think of my list in the comments if you want. If not, I'll catch you on the next one. Okay. Peace.